Hello folks and welcome back to part 5 of our LOL shooter programming tutorial. Today I would like to touch upon the custom cursor here which is our target site, creation of that and also the creation of the um, regions and hotspots for the start, stop, reset and quit menu items. Now the cursor itself, we will be creating using um, third party code, which I found on the internet, because um, there is no real way to change the cursor for a bitmap in C sharp that I'm aware of. Um, you can change the default cursor from a pointer to an hourglass, etc., but you can't replace it with a bitmap. So I found some code online using Windows API and we will be pasting that in shortly but before we do that we need to create a custom class so we will add a new class and uh, we will call this class custom cursor and I can't spell custom there we go add <coughs> And then we will replace this base class with a pre-coded version, which is the code we downloaded off the internet. This is a structure which contains the cursor information. And this is a class which contains some libraries which we use um, to support the creation of our custom cursor. Essentially, in this method here is the actual method proper that we will be causing, calling from within our application. Inside of that method, we will be passing it three parameters. One is the bitmap that we've downloaded off the internet, our target site, and then two other properties here, which is the hotspot, X hotspot and the Y hotspot, which are the they are the business end for the um, cursor. So basically, we have a crosshair, and the center of the crosshair is our hotspot. So we need to include a couple of usings here, one for the DLL import and one for the bitmap. So we will click on the DLL import. You'll notice we've got a little blue squiggle appears under the D. Drop that little arrow down and select using system runtime interrupt services. Do the same again for the bitmap and you will see that we have now got our interrupt services and our bitmap references in there which allow us, allow us to use the bitmap and the DLL import objects. Save that and remove that tab. The next thing that we want to do is to um, initialize that cursor. So we will do that inside of our constructor. The constructor for the main form, which is the mole shooter constructor here. So just underneath initialize, we'll paste in some code. These two new lines here. This creates a scope site. Bitmap is uh, we are instantiating a new bitmap object, and we're giving it the original name B. And into it, we are passing our resource for our site. Now resources is coming up with an error because we aren't actually using the resource library appeared just yet so we will again click on resource find the little blue line underneath the R drop our flag down, flag down and then select using mole shooter properties and there you go problem's gone the next line assigns the cursor for the current application it assigns it the custom cursor here and there's our custom method that we said we were calling um, inside our custom cursor class and then there's the bitmap that we're passing in and then there's the hotspot, which is the half of the height and half of the width, which is obviously defines the dead center of our cursor, which is obviously where the crosshairs cross. Save that. Let's run that up and then bring the application into view. And now you'll see that we've got our custom cursor. So that was pretty straightforward, wasn't it? Uh, only took around about four minutes. So uh, the next phase that I'd like to cover is the defining of the regions around the menu items here for start, stop, reset and quit. 
So we need to ascertain where the left x coordinate will be and the right x coordinate, which defines the width of the menu item. So then whenever we put our cursor within that x region that we define, that is going to be deemed our contact area, which is where we want to click to fire the event. And then obviously the y star and the y stop defines the vertical region. So we'll have defined an X and a Y region, which obviously defines this rectangle. And we will do that four times, one for each of these menu items. Start, stop, reset, and quit. Now, if you think back to part two, I believe, of our tutorial, we added some debug code here. Define my debug. Then down here, you see we've got if my debugs, if my debugs everywhere. And essentially that puts the uh, mouse coordinates on the screen so you know where your mouse is at any time on the screen and we are going to use that to uh, ascertain where the start stop regions are for our menu so we'll uncomment the define my debug and restart the application and you'll notice now that when we move our site around up here at the top left hand side of the screen you can see the x and the y coordinates of the mouse so what you need to do now is to move your cursor up to the top left of your start sign to define the start X and start Y coordinates. Then go to the bottom right of the menu item to define the X start and the Y start of the um, end coordinates of the region. So top left is the start, bottom right is the stop. Okay, so make a note of the X start and the X stop, Y start and the Y stop, and then do that four times for each of these menu items and then stop the application and obviously to fire a mouse click event um, on the form we need to define the mouse click event so to do that go back to your main form make sure the form is active and then go over to the right hand side of the screen to the properties panel select your little lightning bolt and then find the mouse click event so it's there double click that and you've created yourself the mouse handler for the mouse click event now so every time the mouse is clicked it will call this uh, method and into it passing mouse event arguments which are the x and the y location for the um, cursor or, the, or our target site and then what we need to do is um, perform some checks on the x and the y coordinates and fire off our events or our methods to start and stop the game timer when our cursor is clicked with inside of our four defined rectangular regions on our signboard for our start, stop, reset, and quit menu items. So here is some code I prepared earlier. And you can see here that we've got four logical statements if the mouse x and y coordinates if you notice here we've got e dot x and e dot y remember i just said that the mouse event arguments are where your x and y coordinates for your mouse are passed into this mouse click event so e basically contains the x and the y so we wish to put a period on the end of the e here oh, not here sorry here you'll notice we've got button information, click information, deltas, etc. But further down here, you'll see that we've got X and Y. So that's the uh, X and Y coordinate location, which we'll be using. So to get access to that information, obviously, you type E dot X and then E dot Y. And what we're saying here is that X is greater than 3.75, which is the start X of our menu item. So let's get this running. So I can show you here start x on the left hand side of the screen we are saying it's 375 and then over on the far right we are saying that x is actually 498 so we are saying if the mouse is within 375 from the left or 498 from the right it's actually within the, our click area and then if it is within 81 from the top and 141 from the bottom the menu item we are inside our click area so that defines our rectangle so anywhere inside of that rectangle right inside of that rectangle that we click will actually call this method inside of our logical if statement and in this particular case it will start the game timer loop 
and if you notice up here this is where we defined our game timer loop so any code with inside of this will now be running in the next logical if statement there's an else if so if this then do this else if this then do this so obviously it can't be both it can only be one or the other and then we've defined our x as being 375 now obviously the menu all starts at the same the left hand side all starts at the same offset approximately so x will always be say in my particular case 375 for each of these menu items and obviously the right hand side will be the same okay so x start and x stop should be really the same the only ones that really change are going to be the y starts and the y stops as you progress down through the menu here okay and you can see that here on the in the code 375x start 375x start 375x start 37x start and again 498 498 498 and 498 for x stop but you'll notice that the y start and y stops are all going up incrementally as we move down the menu so the next uh, menu item is obviously stop um, so this obviously is our rectangular region that we've defined for the stop and again the rectangular region for the reset and the rectangular region for the quit okay so when we come to do game animation and game timing and score upkeeping we will add more code to each of these sections as required but for now we'll just leave these alone uh, <clears throat> but it would actually be nice to know that it's actually working so a quick way of obviously testing this is to put breakpoints on your methods within within your uh, logical statements here so we don't actually have one for the reset for now so we will just copy just to save a bit of effort and paste the time of stop method and then put a breakpoint on that and then run our application and then click on start and all being well when we click on start we will land on our first breakpoint which is our start hotspot there we go run the application again if we click anywhere outside of the screen look click 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 nothing is being fired if we click the stop hotspot we've now landed on the stop breakpoint press continue applications back up hit reset and you notice we're in the reset sorry in the uh, well it's called stop but we're actually in the reset method hotspot continue and again quit and you'll notice down here now we are actually on the quit hot stop hop spot spot stop pop 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 you know what I mean god damn it so on all three accounts here we obviously want to stop um, the timer because we are saying stop the game or reset the game or quit the game so obviously we want to stop our game loop timer on all three events and then obviously the only time we ever want to start the timer is when we click to start the game save that okay so what can we do next we've been at this 13 minutes maybe we've got just enough time to squeeze in the audio for the shotgun going off every time we click the mouse button now firing the gun off is relatively straightforward um, first thing you obviously need to do is to find yourself a gunshot sound now I haven't downloaded that yet into this project so I shall go and do that now and get right back to you okay so I've been off to Google oil and I have googled um, shotgun sound effects and I found a WAV file which I have put into my resources folder. So now, and that was just go to downloading it and copying the WAF file into the resources folder physically. So now all you need to do is go to Mole Shooter Properties, Resources, and add it to your resources folder. So to do that, obviously, add resources, existing resource file, post in our resource folder, and then you can only see bitmaps at the moment. So we'll drop the filter tab down and select audio files and there you can see we've got shotgun.wav so we'll double click that and uh, give it a nice name shotgun save that and close that down 
and we need to add a new method so here's the code which I created in our prototype prototype application we've essentially created a method called fire gun it doesn't return any values so we specify a void here we make it private because we don't want to access it outside of our application um, <clears throat> we use the sound player uh, library function which is built into Windows uh, but before we can do that we obviously need to make references to our system media library that gives us access to the sound player and that will just play our simple sound and then we obviously pass in the property or the parameter which is the shotgun web file in our resources file and then we just play it now this isn't going to do anything yet until we call fire gun and we will call fire gun inside of our click event that we just coded up here so do that fire gun that my friends should be that so let's run the application and see what happens okay so this is where I wake the wife up but click click as you can tell by that it is working so today we have covered our custom graphic telescopic site for our cursor we have covered our hotspots for our menu items we've defined the regions the x starts and the y starts and stops etc and created the logic to deal with that inside of our mouse click event handler and we've added the gunshot sound effect too so i hope you found today's tutorial part five useful and in our next part um i am planning i think on animating the mole himself okay so uh, until then i uh, i look forward to that um, have a great time and uh, look after yourselves and happy coding bye for now